it's interesting to decide or to find out how Penn Hills decides from week to week. Should they win the toss? Do they want the football? Or the first two weeks we saw them, uh, I believe they won the toss. The first week they deferred against Seneca. They won the toss, took the ball tonight. They win the toss and take the football. wonder how they decide that from week to week. Flip a coin. Well, no, they do that. <laughs> to find out what they're going to do, I guess. With the field conditions as they are, the Pendles Indians might want to get the ball to try to put points, in, put the ball into the end zone before this field gets much worse. That's a good point. And you can see in the center of the field, as you saw with the, the toss of the coin, and right now you can see puddles in the center of the field, and of course that'll get torn up as we go on through the evening. The sidelines are soft; they're not muddy like that. We were down on the field before the game, and you can see. Uh, as you will see throughout the evening, Penn Hills uniforms already are showing wear and tear from the mud. So uh, I think throughout this game, we will most likely will be calling some incorrect names and numbers. Bear with us, folks. It's certainly not intentional. But as this game wears on, you'll know exactly, exactly what I mean. Because before the game, we saw, whether we saw Salih Grice on the field, and it's 48, looks like more like a 40. Guessing will kick off the plum. Thompson, Strader, and Jeremy deep for Penn Hills. Split kick by split kick up the middle of the field. The ball taken by Damian Germany, who slips and falls down, and the Indians will take over close to their own 30 yard line. And indeed, we see it on the first play of the night on the kickoff. Damian Germany slips as he tries to make a cut, but Penn Hills. Not too bad field positioning starting at their own 30. You see Len Gilmer trotting into the huddle. The junior signal caller for the Indians. The Indians coming out in their traditional I formation. Second man through, looks like Thompson. Thompson is fun, fights for some yardage. Picks up close to six. Number 74, Chris Silvia, one of the men making a tackle on Thompson. And uh, he made a kind of a horse collar tackle. Some Penn Hills Indians fans screaming face mask as Thompson got spun around. But I think it was a horse collar, more of a grabbing of around the shoulder pads instead of the face mask. Ronnie Graham comes to the sidelines. Probably play as little offense as possible this week. Again, it's Thompson, second man through. It gets not much of anywhere. He runs, runs into two of his own men. Among them, Mike White and... That's the other one. Can't see the number. This is B.J. Dinatale. Pulled Dino Felino before the game. New Jersey, every quarter. You can only go far. So the Indians now face what looks like a third and four. Ball on their own 36-yard line. Pitch back to Thompson. Again, Thompson looking to get to the outside. And Thompson will come up short of the first down. And the Plum Mustang defense holds on the first drive of the game. And that has to be a big series for the Plum defense. I'm sure it is, Bill. They have to get a little confidence from that, stopping the running uh, attack of Penn Hills. And Penn Hills, you know, excuse me, they will run the football, they will run the football, and they will run it at you. It's fourth and about two, and Gilmer to the sideline, and it's a long one, and they're going to be close to a delay here. There was a little confusion as to getting the punting team or if they were going to go for it on fourth down. So it's a good move to punt deep in plum territory. So the Indians, as you say, will have to hurry. They only have 25 seconds on the on the play clock. So Dave Zakia will punt for the Penn Hills Indians. Nice kick by Zakia. Ball is received at by number 82, Ryan Fulmer. And he loses about two yards on the return. Nice coverage by the Penn Hills special team. Excellent coverage, and you know, that all starts with the punt. And Zakia got a nice high spiral, and the hang time was the key. And that gives the uh, the coverage team time to get down. There's a Penn gym, or Plum, excuse me, starts just inside their own 30. The Plum Mustangs led by quarterback Scotty Umberger. In the backfield, Dave Puchka, number 21. 
First man through goes nowhere. Nick Odo. Tossed by the Penn Hills line. Looks like almost everybody is on that tackle. Well, Graham was there and also Mike White, but then leading the charge, Jeremy George. He's been very impressive in the uh, early going in the first three non-conference games, and he made the initial stop, and I believe it was Puchik up through the line. We're going to give him a gain of about a yard, second and nine. Alberger under center with Odo and Puchka in the backfield. Second. Come on, Gibson just met Odo in the backfield. And brought him to the turf as Umberger put the ball in his gut. Well, we had about six or five or six on the last tackle. You had six and five, and they were on the same jersey on that tackle. Big Damon Gibson grabbing and slamming Nick Otto to the turf, and he'll lose about three yards on that play. Ben Hills definitely has a very sizable size advantage in this contest. Yeah, we talked about that on our way here, and uh, definitely the two big fellas in all of Penn Hills line. Uh, Plum is not able to match up size-wise. They're going to have to try to use their quickness to defeat that. Tomasovic wide to the right. Umberger looking to the near side under pressure, and he's brought down on the backfield. Corey Connors in on the sack. Mike White following up. We'll give that sack all the way to Corey Connors. Now Plum will have to punt. Indeed, Corey Connors. We talked about him last week. He's been very impressive. And uh, Umberger was looking to his right. He's a left-handed quarterback, started to roll to his left. But Connors took his feet right out from under him. Uh, also, uh, White was in on there, Gibson, but uh, they were able to get the sack. Plum punt rolls out to Dwayne Thompson, who takes it at his own 40-yard line. Looks for a block. Thompson has some running room off the sideline. Cuts into the near side. And Thompson with a nice return for the Indians. Will take over at the Plum 30-yard line. Nice return by Dwayne Thompson. Looks like the ball is going to go out of bounds, but he picks it up and just beats the first wave of blocking from those tacklers. He picks up about a 30-yard return. 31 yards, and uh, I think that was the key is the fact that Plum may have thought it was going out of bounds. Thompson took it over there, not more than uh, two feet from the sideline. It just went right up that sideline before he cut it back. Excellent starting position on drive number two for the Indians. So now the Indians have a golden opportunity in Plum territory. Second man through is straighter, and he's met in the backfield. Mike Pastor got in there. Holds the Indians for no gain. We talked about Grant's not going outside because of the field conditions, but if you look at the field, the money is spot is at the center of the field. You look like you want you may want to move the ball to the outside where it's a little more solid footing. Well getting there will be a problem, but you can tell, especially on the near side of the field, we're on the opposite side that we usually are. Uh, the, towards the sidelines, the footing is definitely better. Strader, first man through with the carry. Picks up a couple to bring up third and long for the Indians. Lenny Gilmer runs to the sidelines to get the play call. Head coach Neil Gordon in the headset. I don't know if it's by design, but Penn Hills offensively always seems to start very methodically. Maybe calling a feeling out process, but... They never really get going off the bat, and uh, it's been evident in the first three games. And here tonight, on their second drive, excellent field position. They're only able to pick up one yard on two plays. Dina Daly wide to the right. First man through is straighter with some running room. He picks up a first down, spins to pick up maybe one more. He's very close to an Indian first down. We'll call it about a yard short. It'll be fourth and one. I think the Indians would have to go for it from here. Dane Zakia has the leg to make a field goal from this range. But with the field conditions as they are, I don't think that the Indians will chance that. Ball's just uh, about the 22, maybe closer to the 21. So you figure about a 38-yard field goal. But Zakia would be kicking from that muck out there. So I think it's a smart move to go for it. You turn it over here on downs, uh, you're not giving up much field position. Power eye formation for the Indians. Dwayne Thompson picks up the Penn Indian first down and a few more. The Indians going back to the power running game. We'll give Thompson about three yards on the pickup, and it's well enough for Penn Indian first down, and the drive will continue. 5.09 to go in the first quarter. Still no score. Along with my broadcast partner, Bob Orkwitz. I'm Bill Navari. Great to have you along. On a cool... Friday evening. The bottom began today, Bob. Lenny Gilmer, first man through, gives it to Psychogi Livingston. 
who it is, and he doesn't get much, if anything. Hockey's well, been kind of the forgotten man in that backfield. I guess because of the success of Strader and Thompson, Livingston has only carried the ball 10 times through the first three games, picking up 20 yards, and as a matter of fact, he barely got back to the line of scrimmage that time, maybe even lost a half yard. Gilmer with a quick pass on the outstretched hands of Victor Strader. Victor Strader looks like he gets the ball down close to the 15 yard line. He's right close to the first down. Nice reach by Victor Strader to pull in the Gilmer pass. Two step, two step drop and a timing pattern by Gilmer. A very safe pass. And it is a first down. They, they get over there. They're going to call it the 10. The ball is just uh, over the 10, but. Nonetheless, the first down again for the Indians, and uh, first of the year via the pass. First, first down. <laughs> All right, formation for the Indians. There's Dwayne Thompson. Thompson spins to the outside, and he's brought down by 10 of the 11 Mustangs on the field. Clock continues to roll, approaching 3.40 to go in a score this first quarter. Indians with a second and goal from the six yard line. Again, the power eye formation. Pitch back to Strader looking for a block. Cuts back to the middle. Doesn't get much. Gets inside the five. And now a big play for the Indians where it's third and goal. Well, that play designed to go to the outside. And Strader saw there was nothing doing. Cut it up off tackle. And you got to give him credit to just uh, put his nose in there and die to to pick up the yard, the yard and a half that he did, and Pendle's now faced with a third and goal at the five. Jeremy George and B.J. B. DiNatale as the ends. And there's Dwayne Thompson, comes up the middle, close to the goal line. Looks like Thompson is in, and it is. Six points for the Indians. Dwayne Thompson, five yards, six points, and the Indians are on the board. Touchdown number three for Dwayne Thompson on the season and the first in the Quad East opener it comes after his punt return with Penn Hills in great field position. It took him nine plays to go to 30 yards, but Thompson caps it off with a five-yard touchdown run. Dave Zakia to try the point after. Big mud spot just to his left. Victor Strader gets the hold down and the kick is up. All right, through the pipe. And the Indians are up 7-0. 2.40 to go here in the first quarter. Very enthusiastic Penn Hills crowd on hand tonight. Thompson now with 18 points and ties uh, Victor Stowe, ties Ronnie Graham, excuse me, the leading scorer in the early going for the Penn Hills Indians, both with three touchdowns. We'll see when the Penelope's offense comes back on the field. They do not have the blocking of Ronnie Graham. B.J. DiNatale and Jeremy George in at the end position. Ronnie Graham nursing what we'll call a pulled muscle in the lower abdomen. The Penelope's coaching staff wanting to take no chances. Especially with the help of Ronnie Graham. Especially with a sloppy track like tonight, it's going to get worse. Any slip or any uh, bad turn out there on the bad field would, would injure that even more. Number 85, Bob Tomasovich down deep the field to the kickoff. Ball goes to one of the up men. Drives the break to the outside. But a nice defensive play by number 43, John Davidson, our, one of our seniors of the week. Ryan Fulmer on the return. And every player is so important, especially in football. It's a great team game, and even though you don't start, you see action on special teams. That was an excellent tackle by Davidson, and Pendle starts at their own 22, or Plum, excuse me. Mustangs take over, Bob says, on their own 22-yard line. This 
time the Indians or the Mustangs go to an eye formation with Odo and Brian Hartung. And Brian Hartung gets the carry and he's met in the backfield again. Coming out with the ball is Devon Gibson. I don't know what the officials will say. They'll say he's down, I believe. We've seen that happen several times. Gibson makes a tackle and just jumps out of the pile with the football. Very enthusiastic young man. Very strong young man. And a very <laughs> big young man. Point is, he may still have some uh, some growing in him. It's kind of frightening. It's not bad at basketball either. I'll talk more about that later. Odo. Blown back in the backfield. Umberger looking to throw the football. He's under pressure. Has a lot of time. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's one downfield. A wide open to Mosevich. Brad Guthrie takes in the long pass. Deep, deep but independent territory is the 36. How Brad Gething got behind the Penn Hills defense. I'm sure it's a question by the Penn Hills coaching staff. I'm sure the secondary was... Well, some of it may have had to do with the fact Umberger's that... Gonna yes, that's what happened. Umberger ruled to his left, and they came off uh, maybe too early in a run support. And he just heaved it as far as he could. Gepping uh, caught it about midfield and ran for an extra uh, almost 15 yards, 43 yards covered on that, pass play, on that pass play. And that's initial first down for Plum and a, and a big gainer. See the strong arm of Scott Umberger. Umberger fumbles a snap, gets back on the football. Credit the young quarterback for having the wherewithal to jump back on the ball. Of course, once you fall on it, you're down automatically. Yeah, but the, the key is retaining ground. possession. And, and you don't want to try to make too much happen. You just want to get on it. You don't want to try to pick it up and run with it because that could cause worse things to happen. Particularly when you have a first down and you're in Penn Hills territory. You come up with a second and 11 now. So not much damage done on the play. Almost the same as having an incomplete pass. So now the Mustangs again go to the single back with Nick, o Nick Odo. Twins right. For one of the screens. Numberger is brought down in the backfield. Garrett Livingston, Mike White et al. They wanted to screen to Odo. There was no doubt. Umberger went back with a little hesitation. The lineman hit and released as you do on the screen. But White Speed uh, was able to get him there first. Humberger gets uh, sacked for a loss of seven to about the 44-yard line. That's so the second be... sack of the, the evening. So after the big play by the Mustangs, two plays in a row, they've gone backwards. Now there seems to be some kind of mud on the football. So you see off to our right, bring on the, the old golf spike mats, clear out the spikes. I'm not sure if the time I was called before, I, I didn't see it signaled. That's the end of the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. How about that? Jimmy and Crickets. <laughs> Got the coaching staff and the cameraman to our left blocking the scoreboard. That's the end of the first quarter. Penn Hills Indians 7, Plum Mustangs nothing. You're watching Penn Hills Indians 95. Second quarter action about to get underway. The Penn Hills Indians 7, the Plum Mustangs nothing. Well, Mustangs faced with a third and a long way to go. Bill, I'll have a brief second. I just wanted, after compiling and looking at the statistics, it was for the first three non-conference games, pretty much even. Penn Hills pulls a slight edge in, in many categories. Offensively, they've gained about 30 yards more than their opponents. But I think two key factors stuck out in my mind anyway. One is that their two top runners, Victor Strader and Dwayne Thompson, both averaging six and a half yards a carry. And the other one, one turnover in three games, while Penn Hills has eight takeaways. That was almost a costly turnover, but the defense, another story of the first three games, pulled Seneca Valley off the scoreboard. That's true, and then they're only, they're only allowing seven points through three games. I, I have that divided. I just can't see it. 2.3 per game, which will win a lot of ball games. Absolutely. The Mustangs called a timeout before the second quarter got underway. Umberger looking to pass. Looking downfield, he has a man at the 15, the ball is caught for a Plum Mustang touchdown. Number 85, Bob Tomasovich, the hero here. And the Mustangs on a third and long, put six points on the scoreboard. 
and head coach Neil Gordon is irate. And again, you see the strong arm of Scott Umber. That's 87 yards of offense in two plays for Plum, and they're within one point. Greg Watson on to try the point after to tie the game. That's the first play of the second quarter. So it takes the Mustangs nine seconds of this quarter to tie the game, or at least pull within one. Watson's kick is up and good, and we're tied at seven. Oh my. This is where talking on the Pennell's defense, not allowing points, just like that. The Plum Mustangs move 87 yards. All in the air. Who kicked that extra point? Number 99, Greg Watson. Okay. But we talked about the pass with Scott Umberger, and although he's been sacked twice for minus 14 yards, 87 yards passing, and the big touchdown to Bob Tomasevich, and Plum is right back in the game. Court now for the Pendles Indians to try to put some points on the board. I think we're going to see the Mustangs going to the air quite often the rest of this game with success like that. Indeed. We'll see if Coach Larry Gillespie makes any adjustments on the secondary. Watson does the point afters. But Ken Mishraki. Excuse me, Brad Getzing got the touchdown pass. Caught one of the long passes. Does a kickoff. Safe play. Swift kick out to the 35. See, falling on the football is Craig Gilmer, younger brother of quarterback Lenny Gilmer. And that's a safe play. Again, you don't want to take any chances. You don't have that bad field position at the 35. You don't want that ball squirting and squirming around. So Craig Gilmer comes up with it, and Penn Hills obviously find himself in the ball game. Plum could have just rolled over after the Penn Hills touchdown drive, but they went back to their passing attack, their bread and butter. They tie it up. The motion is straighter. Livingston alone set back. And Livingston with the ball, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. Picks up maybe two. And he's now the second, and we'll call it a short eight. In fact, the sticks look close to second and seven. Scoreboard says second and nine. Who can you trust anymore, Bob? You can trust me. We'll call it second and eight. Right in the middle of those sticks and the scoreboard. Damian Germany wide to the far side of the field. Pitch back is Dwayne Thompson. Thompson looking to get to the outside, and that's he doesn't quite do it. Thompson picks up maybe three, four yards. But the Plum Mustangs do a nice job of containing that outside. Well, Thompson had room. He just couldn't get there. The sweep was to the far side of the field, and he tried to use his speed, but Plum, is their, their containment and also their pursuit was quick to catch Dwayne Thompson from behind, and he tried, like the Dickens, to get to the outside, but only picked up three. We talk about field conditions being the great equalizer, and perhaps might have seen it on that play. Ronnie Graham in on the offense will come wide to the near side. Saw him a couple of times last week with balls thrown to him off his fingertips. Pitch back to Strader. He's going to throw the football. Strader looking for too far. Ronnie Graham slipped at the 40. The play would have worked, but Graham slipped in the mud. And I think Strader just showed some good arm strength. That he just too. threw the ball too far. Graham had a nice move to get around Gething at about midfield. And uh, he was open. He was about five yards behind. He, however, slipped, and the pass was too far. A good play for Penn Hills just didn't work to their advantage. Fourth down now for the Indians. Zakia will punt. A good play call anyway, I should say. I like that play call. Number 85, Bob Tomasevich, who caught the touchdown. And number 82, Ryan Fulmer. Tomasevich with the football. Tomasevich doesn't go much of anywhere. Picks up about six. Does a good job to do that, and the Mustangs will take over from their own, we'll call it 37 and a half yard line. I think Tomasovich had a big return in, in last week's game against Indiana. 
Punt return. Punt return for one of the two touchdowns that Plum had last week. So he showed his speed, obviously, on the uh, touchdown catch when he got behind the Penn Hill secondary. And obviously, dangerous return, man. But Penn Hill's able to stymie him there after about a four-yard return. Well, now we'll see what Umberger does again. This time, split back. And it's Puchka. Was brought down in the backfield by DeMond Gibson and B.J. DiNatale. So the Mustangs are going nowhere on the ground, everywhere in the air. As the game wears on, uh, they don't have success running the football. Look for them, well, their two passes right now have been deep routes, but maybe look for them to throw shorter routes. On the sack, the second sack anyway, wasn't designed for a short pass, a screen pass. But uh, if Plum cannot run the football, and they have not been able to do it through the first quarter and three minutes here in the second quarter, look for them to throw the ball even more. Ron Bedaly, the lone setback. Puchka is in motion. Umberger is going to throw again. And he fumbles a snap, tries to pick it up and run, and goes nowhere. Nice play by the Penn Hills defense to keep their eye on Scotty Umberger to close that down quickly. But again, a good, jo good job by Scotty Umberger even to pick the ball up. And this time he was able to try to at least go forward a little bit and dig it back to the line of scrimmage. And if Graham wasn't there, if Graham was dropping back in pass coverage, that, might, that could turn into a big play, almost uh, uh, not a design play, but a quarterback draw type deal. But uh, give Graham credit for making the stop. So now third and 13 for the Mustangs. But Daly and Puchka split in the backfield. You know Umberger's going to put the ball in the air, or somebody will. Motion. And I'll march it back to make it third and 18, but the Mustangs scored their touchdown on a third and 18. Tomasovic was a little too anxious. Perhaps going on the deep route. That's the first penalty of the year. We have one penalty and in a muddy field as of yet with 8.13 to go in the first half. No turnovers in the football game. But we have seen the ball on the field twice from Plum through bad exchanges between their quarterback, Scott Umberger, and their center, Chris Silvio. Motion is getting. Umberger's looking to throw. Umberger under pressure. He's going to run the football. Ronnie Graham takes him to the outside. Umberger has a pen, has a plump first down, and a few more. Nice play by Scott Umberger to pick up the first down. Flag down at the 40 yard line. And it's going to go against the plump Mustangs. What a break for the Indians on that flag. He won't give him a first down. He will pick up 10 and they go from the spot of the flag. Clipping. So well, that's a devastating penalty. Better move them back to the 25-yard line. So Umberger will get a pickup of 10. And if you notice, Bill, he's left-handed, and obviously it's it's more comfortable for him to roll. But his first uh, initial looking to roll out is left. He got sacked twice rolling out left. This time he went left, came back right. That's what made it a big play. The clipping is going to negate that, however. So instead of a third and 13, it's going to be third and about 20. The ball goes from the, the ball goes back to the 25. You're going to call it the 23. That's 27, and he was over midfield, so that's about 32 yards uh, on that penalty. And it's only going to mark off 15, but he was over into Penn Hill's territory and had the first down. We'll talk about Scotty Umberger being left-handed. The natural rule for a quarterback, most, most of them right-handed, is to the right. And so Umberger, with Umberger, which confused defense because he rolls to the left. And he's a southpaw quarterback and is much more comfortable, but that's his initial look to the Quick left. Quick snap, Umberger puts the ball up in the air as the mass of engineer midfield, and he catches the ball! He gets to be on the penalty defense and Tomasovic is going to score another plum touchdown. And for the first time in 1995, the Pendles Indians are behind on the scoreboard. The second time. Excuse me. Oh, my. Bob Tomasovic in a jump ball comes down with it. The Pendles defenders fall. Not a play. It looked like the uh, offensive line moved too soon, but it was a quick snap. 75 yards. Big plays. For the Plum Mustangs, and they are definitely excited over that Plum sideline. Well, they should be. What a turn of events. And this will make Scotty Umberger's stats look very, very impressive. Kick is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 
So 721 to go in the first half. It's Plum 14, Penn Hill 7. You're watching Penn Hills Indians 95. With 7.21 to go in the first half, it's the Plum Mustangs 14, Pendles Indians 7, along with Bob Orquist on Norma Pari. And Bob, the Pendles Indians down by 7 for only the second time in 1995. How big of an offensive series is it now for the Indians? Uh, it's not crucial yet, but good teams respond to adversity. Remember that. And this is obviously, they said, the only second time they faced adversity on the scoreboard. And uh, their secondary faced some adversity. Uh, Scott Umberger, 3 of 3 in the early going, 162 yards and two touchdowns. Brad Gethin with a deep kick taken by Dwayne Thompson. Thompson gets it out to the 30 yard line where the Indians will take over. We'll see if the Indians continue with their power running football game. I wouldn't abandon it just yet. We still have plenty of time left in this game. Uh, I'm sure on the sidelines, the defensive coaches are uh, having their secondary and saying, hey, guys, got to tighten it up back there. Like Victor Strader caught in the backfield. Tackled by the entire Plum defense. Cheerleaders and the band. Pendle's definitely having problems getting on track with that running game. Plum traditionally gives Penn Hill's fits in the quad east opener. Like just a couple of years ago, beat the uh, Indians at Yuha Stadium. But here we are, Mustang Stadium in the dropway goes to Victor Strader, who cuts back to the inside, gets out close to midfield, or close to the 40-yard line, excuse me. He'll be just short of a Pennell Indian first down. And perhaps see the power eye come into this again, into the oh, backfield on They'll the want to play. pick up the first down, and a nice play. I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, first time all year we've seen a pure draw play. We've seen delayed handoffs, but that was a draw play, and there was a lot of room for Strader. Gave a little shake and bake at the 35, unable to shake the tackler, but did pick up nine and a half. So third and one for the Indians. Second man through is Dwayne Thompson. He has a Pendles Indian first down. Big play for the Indians, even though they only netted three yards. But well, those two things. First of all, it, it gives you a, a little bit of confidence that you, you move the football at least. But the second thing, and more importantly, gives the defense a chance to rest and regroup. And a long drive will definitely help that cause. Regroup, perhaps, but the Pendles Indians play that Iron Man football. A lot of the offense plays on defense, particularly those huge linemen. Lenny Gilmer looking to throw the football. Gilmer's going to run to the outside. Gilmer still on his feet, crosses midfield, gets knocked out of bounds, kept in bounds at the 49-yard line. Nice play by Gilmer to get close to the close to the sticks. He called we, second and a long two. We know he's an excellent runner. And he saw no receiver open, tucked it up, and uh, did a little tiptoe dance down the near sideline to us here and uh, picked up a sizable eight-yard gain on first down. We know he has definitely great athletic ability. I think he wanted to hit a short pop because both Dean Italy and Germany were split out wide to the right, but neither of them were open, so he tucked it under and picked up the good game. Back to the eye formation for the Indians. Again, it's Dwayne Thompson who crosses close to the 47-yard line. Be close to the sticks, but just short. It'll bring up another third down and perhaps half a yard. It'll be close. They might even call for a measurement, and they will. I thought he had it. It looked like to me he was past his place. From this angle, looks like it'll be just short. This is probably the closest we'll be to a field all season. In this 
press box. The auxiliary press box there at the mm. Club Mustang Stadium. A gracious adjective at that. What, auxiliary or press box? I think both. <laughs> Definitely a box, and the Indians are about three inches short for Lenny Gilmer to just dive behind either Gibson or White. Of course, if you notice the field where the ball is, it's a very slick spot of the field. The Indians must be sure of their footing here. Germany wide to the near side. Don't expect the ball to go to him. And Lenny Gilmer does power right behind the big lineman, and he gets the Indian first down. Dives off to the right side. Scoreboard inadvertently had it as fourth down. It was third down. Of course, they've got the Plum fans into it. Dives behind Kevin McCoy, number 77. Picked up the, the right first side. down at just the, at the order called the 46, just outside the 45. So Penn Hill started this drive at their own 31, and they have now two two first downs. Time not yet a factor in the first half. Approaching four minutes to go. Plum 14, Penn Hills Indian seven. You heard right, Plum up by a touchdown. Two long passes. Lenny Gilmer brought down in the backfield. Looks like he was having a quarterback keeper. And the Plum defense comes up with a big play of their own. Dave Ritchie, the defensive lineman, will drop Gilmer for a two-yard loss. And it looks like he wanted to get outside and maybe run a, 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 at an option attempt. But Ritchie had none of that. So second down and 13 now for the Indians. Percent trips right, twins left. No one in the backfield. The Maybe a reverse. Gilmer does a nice shot to get the ball out of, out of the backfield. He's being rushed on the blind side. Number 90, Ken Mishraki. I think you need to keep someone in as containment there. Maybe an end or a running back. because Gilmer is definitely exposed and he did a nice job to, to get rid of that football. And uh, he just threw it up, luckily he threw it far enough because uh, it was the closest man to it was uh, Penn Hill's uh, plumb defensive back. Third and 13 now, Gilmer looking deep for Ronnie Graham. Oh! Just off his hands and Jeremy George standing alone at the 10 yard line. George was open, he broke open late. It's easy for fans to sit there and say, he should have thrown to George. He was open, but not as open as the bomb defender that was with him cut off after they saw that the ball was thrown. But George did have a few steps, and uh, if Gilmer had maybe more time, maybe he would have took a shot at the deep pass to Jeremy. Ronnie Graham almost coming down with a nice catch, but then again, it was almost picked off by Plum well, on the tip. He's 6'4", and if you throw a pass too tall, you definitely throw it high to him. Dave Zakia to punt. A high corner kick. Ball goes out of bounds short. It'll be marked about the 30-yard line, will be my guess. Oh, the mark is the 22. Even better. So with 3.08 to go, the Plum Mustangs, I'm sure we'll look to just try to run out the first half. Well, I think that might be an advantage for Penn Hills, too, also, to regroup. If you're not out of this game, any means 14 to 7, but maybe you're kind of shocked that you've given up two big touchdown plays, a 44-yarder and a big 75-yarder on uh, a play that could have deflated Plum because Umberger had that big run the play before that, but the clip called that back to the 25, and then all of a sudden, bang, a jump ball situation, and Tomasovic has the football, and he's behind the defense. He's in the end zone, and Plum is celebrating. High formation now for the Mustangs. Plum looking to get to the outside. Nice running. Brian Parton to carry. Called about eight. Hit in the backfield, but Hartung able to get the ball to the outside. That was just designed to go off tackle, and Penn Hills had shut that down, but give Harding credit to, to bust it off to the outside. And first sizable gain, <coughs> excuse me, for a plumb via the ground. That counted anyway without a penalty uh, negating it. Split backs. Hartung and Nick Odo. Umberger on a quick pass off to the near side. Unfortunately for the Indians, Ryan Fulmer steps out of bounds at the 41. And the 
Indian secondary has to be asking themselves what's going on. Well, what happened there was obviously they're, they've been burned a too long play, so they're playing off the man. And this time, it was a quick pass to Fulmer down the sideline. He picked up the first down. Eight of 11. Humberger, four of four in the first half for 173. Of course, don't forget fans coming up at halftime. The exciting Penhills fan. Again, it's hard tongue. It cuts back to the inside, and he's crunched by Ronnie Graham. So Corey Connors in on the tackle. Picks up two. Second down now for Plum as we approach two minutes to go here in the first half. Plum 14, Penn Hill 7. Two big pass plays for the Plum Mustangs, putting them on top. I expect we'll see Umberger put the ball in the air again. Again, Odo and Hartung in the backfield. And this time again, it's Hartung who slips in the backfield and goes nowhere. DJ Dinatale trying to strip the ball. It'll be now third down for Plum, and that frightens me. Oh, Hartung kind of uh, rumbling, stumbling, bumbling for the yard after he lost footing. And indeed, third down has been a frightening, frightening, frightening. Uh, Experience for Penn Hills tonight. And the Plum Mustangs call a timeout with 118 to go in the first half to decide the issue. And again, they've had third and long twice and have scored touchdowns on them twice. So why not put the ball up uh, up again? The last play was third and about 25, maybe about 28. And the play before that, it was third and I believe 11 or, or thereabouts. And uh, Bang, two deep passes, two plumb touchdowns. And I'm sure that's what the defensive staff and the defense now are talking about. Watch that deep pass. And for Bill Romano and Plum, why not put the ball in the air? It's been successful. Absolutely. To the tune of 173 yards. So you always want to guard against the turnover, Oliver. So you got to be just a little careful. Well, we've talked about the Penn Hills defense and how strong they are all season, but then again, we've always said that their biggest Achilles heel has been the secondary, and it's certainly shown that tonight. Of course, the secondary has come up with some huge plays. They have Victor Strader playing center field. They have seven defensive backs, four linemen. And Umberger will throw, and there goes B.J. DiNatale. Umberger close to the... That's a flag. threw the ball up and a flag was thrown as Ryan Fulmer was held up. The Pedals fans booing and I think they're booing because it was an inadvertent bump but it was a bump nonetheless. Nick Brown stepped up on the play and uh, I know they're not happy but it was a bump, the and call it had to be made. The call had to be made on that play. Even though the pass might not have been caught, it may have been overthrown. It was still, however, there was contact. That'll be a first down for Plumber. I think the second might be a little snake bit, and they're going to hit anything that moves out there. I think they're going to take the chance of hitting somebody. I think Nick, Nick Brown a little overzealous. But, of course, we saw that when you talk about a nickelback situation when they bring in five defensive backs. This time the Indians had seven. And Umberger had a shot to run the football after he got past the initial rush of the four linemen. There was a lot of room. He could have chose to tuck it under and run that football. Big play, though, on the first down via the pass interference. Hartung man in motion to the right. Flags fly. My guess is we're going to have some illegal motion. The pass comes out to, the, to Nick Odo and Jeremy George. Stops him at the line of scrimmage. Flags fly. Matter of fact, he'll lose about a yard, and I think Pennell will decline that penalty. The ball should go against Would the you? Mustangs. Although you might want to push uh, it back five instead of one. You might want to push it back five, but, but they scored already on 75 yards. You'll sacrifice the down. I think I would take the down. I would decline the penalty and take the down, but the Indians will take the, football. We'll take the ball, move the ball back. Yeah. 
My logic on that would be they've already scored twice on deep passes, so the yardage doesn't quite matter much. Well, and it's a minute left, too, so you want them to try to have more yards to go. They're going to maybe try to get into field goal range, and that's another uh, frame of thinking is that time is also against them. We're under a minute to play here in the second quarter. How big would a turnover be now? Ryan Fulmer goes to motion to the right. Umberger looking left, rolls out of the pocket, looking deep again, and the ball thrown out of bounds wisely by Scotty Umberger. And a flag flies. I think they're going to call Devon Gibson on roughing the passer. That'll be second first down. No, it's against Plum. I'm thinking they're going to take that penalty also. I think they called a clip. What was the? The flag was thrown about near where Umberger threw the nine yards behind the line of scrimmage, and then it'll be 15 from that. I didn't catch what the call was. It was. I think it was a clip. It marked off 10. There goes another five. So Umberger gets minus nine because it was the, that was the point of the penalty. He gets his first incompletion, then a clipping penalty. So not a bad, not, not a good play at all for, for Scott Umber. So it's first and from here to Yuha Stadium. Or close to it. They're on the 31. They need to get to the 30. Of course, they've been. The they, other 30. <laughs> the other 30. They've shown, uh, they've shown they're not really ill-adversed in uh, these long situations, however. So we'll call it first and 39. And it looks like the receiver jumped again on the near side. Flags fly, so we're probably wrong. And Nick Odo is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And the clock rolls at 28. And it's second down. Second down in a long way, and timeouts being made by Penn Hills. I would think at this point you would just want the clock to expire. Oh, I think uh, they may have called timeout to protect against the long pass play with only 20 seconds left. And not thinking we're going to get the football back. It's only second it's only down. second down. I would think he would want to let the clock run. But perhaps Pennell's thinking turnover. I don't know. Oh, I definitely may be thinking we don't want to get burned long again. Perhaps just to give the defense a break to set up a... To bring in the right personnel... Defensive coach Tim Timko and the poncho out to discuss strategy with the trips. So we hear a train rolling off in the distance. So Victor Strader again playing center field. Indians this time have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven defensive backs. Actually, have four defensive backs. Three linebackers are playing about eight yards off the line of scrimmage. That's correct. Home's going to run again. Numberger takes the ball into the line. That'll be third down. And I That'll think the Indians will let the clock run out. That would be the half. And that they will. Second. For Scotty Umberger. So at the end of one half, it's Plum 14, Penn Hills 7. You're watching Penn Hills Indians football 95.
I will come again. You're coming. I the God and the power of your word over all of your lips. Second half action about to get underway. The Pendles Indians trail the Plum Mustangs by a score of 14 to 7. And Bob Ork was not a good half for the Pendles Indians secondary, but a good half for the Penn Hills defensive line. A lot of good half for a good second quarter for Penn Hills. It was the second quarter that they did all the damage. Defensive line. Rich Chocolate Ovaltine versus Nestle Quick. I'm very surprised. Yeah, very surprised. I really thought that I was drinking Nestle Quick. The Ovaltine flavor was incredible. A rich, sweet chocolate flavor and taste to it. Joseph Arujo of Louisville, Texas is trying Rich Chocolate Ovaltine, a different kind of Ovaltine. Its great taste will surprise you. Rich Chocolate Ovaltine has an excellent taste, an excellent chocolate flavor, and then it adds that nutritional value to it, which Nestle Quick does not have. Rich Chocolate Ovaltine. Can I finish my feed for the Indians? It's not crucial, but it will be big to get some confidence back. I think it'll be more important offensively that when they get the opportunity to move the football, not necessarily score in your first drive, but uh, something to get the momentum and the confidence back in the Indians' favor. Of course, with this being a conference game that makes the outcome of this game that much more crucial, the Indians, uh, it's very tough to lose a conference game, especially when it's the, when the opening one, but of course it wouldn't kill the Indians' chances of making the playoffs. Not at all. You still have six weeks to go after this, so nothing is do or die yet. And it's really, it's really silly to, to be scoreboard watching in the first week of conference play. Or to uh, it's way too early for that. And we still have half football. Anything can happen. I'm sure Plum has gained uh, a worldly amount of confidence. Uh, they had confidence coming in, but after that first half, hey, we can pass the ball on these guys, and uh, that's their bread and butter. And they'll get the football, and I'm sure that uh, they're going to try the <laughs> Until their daddy takes their T-bird away. I've said it before, I will say it again. They got things confused here. Wouldn't that have been cool? Dave Zakia kicking off to his own teammates. Could have took the football and ran in for a touchdown right off the bat. Yes, they were hoping nobody noticed. <laughs> ah, they had to go. The referees had to go and spoil it. Uh, it's always the zebras. taken by number 21, Dave Puchka, the former Penn Hill Indian, who gets some running room out to about the 30-yard line. And Penn Hill's defense comes onto the field. The Plum 
offense. to a yard. And again, tough sledding. Plum is just having all kind of difficulty running the football. Umberger with a quick pass out. Brad Gething at about the 36 yard line. Bringing up now third down for the Plum Mustangs. A little technical difficulty there. But our inside producer Kevin Burke making some quick changes. So now third and five for the Plum Mustangs. All about the 36 yard line. They need to get out to the 41. And the Indian faithful are fired up. Now the fans are behind them. Butch under center. Odo to lone setback flags fly. Make it third and ten. Of course, Plum likes it third and long. Delay of game against the Plum uh, Mustangs. Now third and almost ten for the Plum Mustangs. Umberger looking to throw. Now he's going to run and he's brought down after picking up about a yard. Come on, Gibson comes out fired up, as so does the Penn Hills Indian defense. And a nice stand. And again, Umberger uh, not able to find that much room running the football. And uh, again, one to his left, look left, and the short pass wasn't there. That time he tried to cut it out, but the Penn Hills defense closed the gap. He got back to the line of scrimmage after the penalty and no more. And Gethings on the punt and Penn Hills uh, withstands the draw. They got some momentum going. Jeremy George almost blocks the kick. The ball rolls out to about the 35-yard line. Victor Strader picks it up. Victor Strader gets around one. Gets around the first wall of containment. Still spins out towards midfield. The Mustangs will start, or the Indians, excuse me, will start at the Plum Mustang 44-yard line. And these Indians are fired up. The crowd is definitely into it, and uh, Victor Strader is an exciting player, trying to make something happen. The punt was on the ground, and uh, he did that all on his own. And Penn Hill starts at their own 43, and as I said, maybe not imperative for them to score, but they want to just try to put some yards together and get some confidence offensively. All right, formation for the Indians. Second man through. Dwayne Thompson with some running room. Breaks to the outside. Go, little man, go! Thompson looking for some running room. Catch him if you can. Touchdown, Penn Hills! And just like that, the Indians are back within one. Oh, my! Run, little man, run! 46 yards on a carry. 57. 57 yards on the carry. Thank you, Bob Orquist. There is a man down for the Indians near midfield. The Indians will line up for the extra points, but they will not kick it while the injured Indian is attended to. Spring Thompson for the long run. And the Indians back within one. Zakia will try to tie it at 14. 
and, and Thompson goes quickly from 26 yards rushing to 83 on one play. And talk about a momentum changer. It's definitely back with Penn Hills, and they're going to try to tie it on Sakia's point after. Victor Strader on the hold. Ball would place down. The kick is up, and it's good. 8.50 to go, third quarter. Penn Hills 14, Plum 14. And just like that, it's a brand new ball game. Well, I kept saying not a period of the score, but that was exciting, and they got to the outside. And after the defensive stand, now it's up uh, for the defense again to keep Plum in check. Big plays. We've had three of them. Three actually on Plum's side, four altogether. Two for touchdowns with a Plum passing game. And this time, the little man, Dwayne Thompson, with a 57-yard scamper around right end, and then the Indians are right back tying the game at 14. You gotta like it. You gotta love it. So now the Penn Hills defense, they didn't get much of a rest there at all. They're backing me back on the field. But as fired up as they are, they're gonna have to hold the Plum Mustangs again. Well, sometimes getting fired up can cause problems. You don't wanna get too fired up, too over aggressive. Then you jump off sides and you cause penalties and you don't want that to happen. So it's sort of like you just have to be a little bit restrained, but keep it up. They played well all evening except for the long pass ball. Short kickoff by Zakia. The Mustangs will take over at their own about 35-yard line. The kickoff taken by Ron Vidaly, the running back. So the Mustangs will take over about where they started their last drive. And uh, it went awry, they completed, they did complete one pass, and it was only for about four yards. Again, having much trouble running the football, the Plum Mustangs, minus six yards in the first half, and in the second half, they've only got one on two carries. So uh, they have not moved the football any way, any which way on the ground. Again, the Mustangs go to the I formation. But Daly and Hartung in the backfield. Excuse me, that's Odo. Umberger on the option. Pitches the ball back to Hartung. Hartung gets close to a first down. Be about three yards short. We'll give him seven. And it doesn't seem to have phased the Plum Mustangs at all. The long Dwayne Thompson touchdown run. Well, you can't scrap your offensive game plan even though you're successful with the pass. You cannot come out and throw a pass on every play. It's obvious. And that time they run the option. The first time that they ran the option, they ran it to the, the far sideline which is the sideline with less room since we're on the opposite vantage point. And it did pick up good yardage, seven on first down. Second and three, split backs now for the Plum Mustangs. Scotty Umberger's looking, going to throw the football quick. Tommy pass, the ball still up in the air. Falls incomplete. Now third and three. Of course, I fully expected Plum to throw that. They had second and short. Of course, I expected they were going to probably put the ball a bit deeper than that, but uh, with second and, and a couple of yards, you almost have it down to waste. Indeed, and that's a short pass play, a quick timing pattern where you're, if he catches the football and the receivers tackle immediately, it's a first down, but you want to try to have him break tackles to make something big happen on his own. That's the kind of pass play plumb through there. Third and short right now for the Plum Mustangs. I believe Umberger's, uh, it's only his second incomplete pass of the game. Five of seven on the evening. And in motion is Ryan Fulmer. Umberger looking to the left on the quick timing pass. The pass intended to the touchdown man, number 85, Bob Tomasevich. Falls incomplete, now fourth down for the Plum Mustangs, and we wouldn't really be surprised if they were to fake it. I would, I don't think they, I, I think it's too dangerous. Of course it is, it's the element of surprise. I still don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> well, we're, we're allowed to guess. And Plum does kick it away. On the far side of the field is Dwayne Thompson, and the ball goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And the Indians will take over 80 yards from another touchdown. So the defense holds three and out for the Mustangs. Two consecutive drives, three and outs, and uh, they've settled down, and you just got to work against preventing the long, big play for Plum. Offensively, you might not get the big one-play drive for a touchdown, but well, you still want to make things happen and get out of the shadow. Actually, the 20-yard line is not that bad field position, but you want to try to put some yardage together, keep this momentum now that definitely Penn Hills has. I fully expect to see the Penn Hills power running game at this point. Split backs for the Indians. Pitch to the right side, just Victor Strader looking for a hole, finds none. 
He'll spin ahead for about three. Second and seven for the Indians. Game tied at 14 with 7.15 to go on a running clock in the third quarter. And again, the bread and butter last, it was the same type of play. This was a pitch to Strader. Uh, the play to Thompson was, again, off the right side. That was just a handoff uh, uh, and then around the end play. And uh, Strader did well to get three yards on his own. Garrett Livingston, Victor Strader in the eye. Ronnie Graham in the slot. He's in motion, blocks up the middle. We're looking for Victor Strader, gets to about the 25, and that's all. Be third and five for the Indians, and I really don't expect to put, see him put the ball in the air. Well, Dinatelli was blocking down. If Strader could have busted that to the outside, he had lots of room. Couldn't get off the tackle around the end. He had to try to cut it up inside the tackle. Only got two yards, and it's about third and five now for the Indians. Of course, it's good to see B.J. Natale getting back into the football game after he was lying on the turf. So now Livingston and Strader split. Twins right. Gilmer will throw. Completes the pass to Ronnie Graham, who gets across the 30 for a penalty's first down. We'll mark it about the 33. Safe, quick, safe pass. And a Definitely Graham with the good hands, maybe the favorite receiver of Lenny Gilmer, and that's a safe pass. Graham goes two yards, then comes back two yards downfield to the line of scrimmage, back to the line of scrimmage, and he picks it up all on his own, and uh, he's big enough where he can get those extra yardage, and a uh, first down for the Indians. So that was a rarity, a complete pass by Penn Hills. Penn Hills goes right back to the running game, and they go backwards. Dwayne Thompson gets back in and he loses three. Nose tackle busted right in and stopped Thompson. And again, it's, it's number 51, Dave Ritchie. We saw him do that earlier. We got in the back foot quickly and that's the second play that he's been unblocked. So second and 12 for the Indians. See what kind of creativity they show here. Thompson and Livingston. And it's Thompson to the outside with some more running rope. The little man will go again. Thompson 10, 5, touchdown, Penn Hills. Dwayne Thompson, 70 yards, 6 points. Penn Hills 20, plump 14. Bob Orquist, you gotta love the little man. I do indeed, what speed, and they didn't really need trickery. They just needed number 22 and his speed to the outside. 70 yard a gallop this time, and Penn Hill's in the lead. Oh my. The Penn Hill side of the field is nuts. The plump side is quiet. As Zakia tries to make it a seven point lead. <laughs> Penn Hills coaches are happy. <laughs> Indeed, they should be. It was 14 to 7, and Penn Hills was definitely shocked at halftime, but they've taken control of this game back. Zakia's point after is good. Penn Hills 21, Plum 14, 4.56 to go in the third. 4.56 to go, third quarter. The Penn Hills Indians up by a touchdown, just like that. Two straight drives, two touchdowns, and now Dave Zakia to kick off to a stunned Plum Mustang team. The kick high and deep. Dave Puchka takes it at the 10. Puchka looking for some running room. It's not Puchka, excuse me. That's Aaron Hewitt. Gets the ball out to the 35. The Mustangs take over. We'll mark it at the 37. Two drives for the Indians, two touchdowns. And they've completed this, even though it was a touchdown run, they've completed this game so far as many passes they've completed in the first three games. Well, how about starting the second half with six plays and two touchdowns? They've held the ball for just a little over three minutes and they've got 14 points. So the Plum Mustangs, I'm sure they put the ball in the air and they do. Umberger looking downfield. The pass is complete. No, it's incomplete. The pass intended for Ryan Fulmer. And you know, the, you know, or, excuse me, Umberger. 
Take a deep breath. Umberger's going to put the ball in the air. He's going to throw it again, Bill. I know he's left-handed, but he continuously looks left. Sometimes you don't always see a quarterback lean in one direction. They look left, and they always uh, come back maybe looking right, but Umberger has consistently looked to his left this evening. High formation for the Mustangs. Draw play for the Mustangs. It's Puchka. Puchka with some Miami crosses midfield. Needs a couple blocks. He has one. Puchka gets knocked out of bounds by Ronnie Graham at the 16-yard line. The former Penn Hill Indian Dave Puchka on the draw puts Plum in striking distance from the 37 to the 16. A gain of 48, sweet revenge for Dave Puchka. And a well-designed draw play. Penn Hill's thinking pass. And the draw play burns him. And uh, Plum's sitting pretty now. And the defense has got to tighten up. If you like offense, you've come to the right game. Especially big play offense. This has been a story of big plays this game. Back to the eye, Odo and Puchka. Umberger rolling to the left. He's looking into the end zone. Oh, he looks at pass underneath the Otto. Otto is crunched at the four. But it'll be first and goal for the Mustangs. Strader on the hit. Strader with a big stick last week. Otto will fill that tomorrow. As nice as the hit was, the pass was completed. And it gives Plum a first and goal. Just inside the five. The Indians call timeout with 4.02 to go third quarter. <coughs> Odo and Puchka in the backfield. Fulmer wide left, getting wide to the right. And there's movement on the line. The plum left tackle, number 71, Joe Manganello jumps. So it'll now be first and goal from the nine. And that might change things up where you could maybe take two or three dive plays to get in from the four-yard line. That won't do you any good now, so maybe that'll change up a plum strategy a little bit. Of course, the advantage here for the Penn defense is they, they won't have to think long pass. They have a shortened field, only have 19 yards to defend at this point. Again, out of the huddle to come the Plum Mustangs eye formation. Odo and Puchka, Gething right, Fulmer left. Looking to Gething in the end zone, and Umberger throws the ball out of bounds. Now second and goal from the nine. Well, Gething was open. If you're thinking that's a nine yard completion, then he threw the ball that short. Think again, Umberger ruled to his left again. He was at the far left hash work. He threw that football about 35, almost 40 yards to get an incomplete pass for nine yards. That's a very dangerous pass, though, as well, because the entire team's going left. He throws back to the right. If Pendles is able to pick it off, that's a 100-yard touchdown return. You got paid her with that. You're absolutely right. Steve Whiteman now to the right. Again, eye formation for the Plum Mustangs. And Umberger is hit as soon as he comes off the line, but he doesn't go down. He's running off to his left, and he's brought down. About the six yard line, called a pickup of about three, but clearly he should have been brought down as soon as he took the snap because he was hit at the line of scrimmage. It was Devon Gibson and he banged into both the running back and Umberger. Did not wrap him, however. Tried to just knock him over and it didn't work and give Umberger credit to regain his senses and pick up the three yard gain to about the six. Now timeout for the Plum Mustangs as it's a big third and goal. The ball at the six yard line. Big play for both teams. Odo is a single back getting wide to the right. Man in motion is Fulmer. Quick looking pass incomplete. The pass was intended for Tomasevich and the ball falls incomplete. Now fourth and goal from the nine. And we'll see what Bill Romito wants to do. And it looks like the Mustangs will go. 
They better take a timeout. They're getting very close to getting away. The They're taking too long to decide if you want to go for it. And that causes confusion. That can work in Penn Hill's advantage. Puchka and Odo in the backfield. Twins to the right. Fourth down and goal. Umberger rolling to the right. He's looking. Umberger still looking. He has nobody to throw to. Umberger's brought out at the five. take over deep in plum territory but they hold the mustangs off the board and umberger ran at least 60 yards on that play but credit to penn hill secondary they allowed no mustang to get open well credit mike white for not quitting because he broke a tackle to umberger and white chased him down so he ran at least 40 yards made the tackle penn hills in the shadow of their own goal line what happened umberger ruled right this time there were no receivers when he went back left so he had to run all the way so now the Indians take over with 3.25 to go third quarter. They're up by seven, and they run the ball into the line. No surprise there. Strader on the carry. Boy, wouldn't you love to see them break another one? We need at least to get one first down to calm things down, I'm sure. Hearts are racing on both sidelines. Dejection for the Plum Mustangs. Elation for the Penn Hills Indians. There's a fumble! Gilmer fumbled on this, on this option. The Mustangs recover the ball in the end zone. And just like that, it's 21-20 Mustangs. Holy cow! Fulmer rolled to his right on look like a quarterback keeper. He was hit in the backfield. Number 51, Richie again, come in untouched. And the ball recovered in the end zone by number 70, Jim Moorhead. So now the Mustangs are down by one. And the question is, will they go for two? They're set up for the point after. Greg Watson, ball is up, and it's good. With 2.43 to go third quarter, we're tied at 21. And you talk about a turn of events, Bob Orquist. Penn Hills dodges the bullet, and then they're shot in the foot. A fumble with only their second turnover of the year. This one into the end zone. Richie causes it, Moorhead recovers it, and he's in the end zone. Penn Hill side, you can hear a pin drop. They're stunned. But the but the only only positive note, I guess you can say about this, is that the Penn Hills gets the ball back. And it's still only a tie game, 21 all. And I'm saying strap yourself in and batten down the hatches because if the first three quarters, especially number two and number three, have been any indication, it's going to be exciting down to the end. And don't forget this year we have also uh, have overtime. There will be no tie game. These games all will be decided, win or loss. We're here till somebody decides to win it. Little man Dwayne Thompson standing at his own 15 yard line deep. Short kickoff, the ball still loose on the turf, and Indians fall on it at the 24-yard line. Four Indians fell on the ball, nice play there just to get possession of it, and the Indians will take over at the 24. Well, it's always hairy, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're down in the shadow of your own goal line, so now Penn Hills just has to take a collective breath, hopefully get some yardage in a first down or two, and have things settle down offensively. What a ball game this has been. If you didn't show up for this one, shame on you. You talk about a heart stopper, this has been it. 21 points scored here in the third quarter. Still have two and a half to go. Strader first man through. Crosses the 25, out close to the 26. 
caught a pickup of about two. Well, they start him at the 22, maybe a little more than that. But if Strader is able to pop that into the outside, he goes off tackle. He can cut it to the outside. He had a lot of room to run on the sideline. Uh, good pickup of four, nonetheless, on first down. The Indians seem to have had success running the ball to the outside. Split back formation now for the Indians. And the ball was loose again on the turf. It looks like Victor Strader may have come up with it. But the ball was loose. The bus tanks say they have it. And the Indians come up with the ball. Credit Victor Strader for coming up with that fumble. And the ball will go back to the original line of scrimmage. So Strader loses four yards on that one. And for a team with only one turnover through three and a half games, Penn Hills has gotten an inopportune case of fumbleitis all of a sudden on the last two series. So now third and ten for the Indians. Strader and Livingston in the backfield. Gilmer's going to throw. He pumps once, looks deep. He has Ronnie Graham down the sideline, and he pulls it in at the 45. Longest pass play of the season for the Indians, and what a time for it to come. Indeed, his favorite target, Ronnie Graham. He's a big man, but he got great hands, and a beautiful timing pattern results in a well-needed first down for the Indians into Plum Territory. Lenny Gilmer pump fakes, gives Ronnie Graham that extra step he needs to break open, and Ronnie Graham does a nice job to pull it in, and the Indians have first and 10 at the plum 44, 125 to go third quarter, we're tied at 21. Dwayne Thompson looking for some room to the outside, needs a block, doesn't get it, but still does a nice job to pick up a few yards. But a nice job also by Scotty Umberger to make the tackle. Thompson broke about three tackles just to gain about a yard, a yard and a half. And again, he was looking to cut it up to the outside, but the pursuit caught up to him and also the sideline curtailed his effort. Second down and we'll call it a long eight for the Indians. Third quarter winding down, 50 seconds to go. Penn Hills in plum territory. Split backs for the Indians. Pitch to Strader to the right side. Gets around the outside, cuts back inside. Close to an Indian first down. It'll be short by a couple. But Strader does a nice job leaping some tacklers to pick up the extra yardage. And this time a different look. A pitch to Strader, uh, just straight around the end. And he dove at the end of the play. Picked up some good blocks. Needed one more, didn't get it. But another good pickup. Penn Hill's obviously uh, happy to be where they're at, and maybe they may not have to run a play, but uh, we have now official timeout. Gilmer has, uh, Gilmer has equipment problems. Timeout charge to the Penn Hill's Indians. This has been one heck of a football game. Not a lot of folks really expected this. Of course, we knew coming in at the Quad East, what a talented section that is this year. Indeed it is, and Plum coming off a, kind of a surprising loss last week to Indiana. People thought, well, maybe they're not as good as uh, their record indicates, but they're every bit as good, and they got a great passing attack and obviously using a Penn Hills turnover to get the tying touchdown, but we got 12 seconds left. We're tied at 21, and well worth the price of admission. You know, eight teams make the playoffs in Quad A. I don't think it would be a stretch to say that all eight teams in the Quad East would make great playoff teams. Most of them wouldn't be that much of a stretch. A stretch nonetheless, though. Wow. Well, trying to be diplomatic and not offend any opponents here. But I'm talking, if you look at the top five teams in the Quad East, well, then that's no stretch at all. Well, Gateway's a much improved football team. Man, nah, that's a stretch. Same with Fox Chapel. But you look at Penn Hills, Woodland Hills, McKeesport, Central, Central Catholic, Plum, Plum. Kiski as well, uh, perhaps on the cusp, but what a competitive conference this is. In fact, there are conferences like the, like the Quad West uh, that somebody might win by default. And the South. And the Quad South as well. Upper St. Clair and somebody else. Looks like Ronnie Graham with the ball. There'll be a first down for the Indians. You can see the sweat coming off the bods. 
for the steam, excuse me. And it is Ronnie Graham with the carry in the first down. That'll be the end of the third quarter. There the whistles fly. So after three, Penn Hills 21, Plum 21. Hang on, this is sure to be a wild fourth quarter. You're watching Penn Hills Indians 95. Lenny Gilmer, first man through. Nice pickup. The uniform's getting a bit dirty now. It is Victor Strader. Called a pickup of about five, maybe six yards, second and four for the Indians. What a football game. And look back to the third down, and uh, maybe it was it was more than 10, the 32-yard first down past the Ronnie Graham on the far sideline. Should the Penn Hills be able to push it in? Hard to believe that a pass has kept the Penn Hills Indians' drive alive. The Gilmer 2 of 2 in the second half. A trend perhaps we can see. Ronnie Graham, second man through with some running room. Ronnie Graham gets the Pendles Indian first down. We didn't expect to see him play much on offense this game, but he has really come through in the second half. And he didn't play a lot in the first half, but maybe he's well rested, and maybe that muscle pull feeling a little bit better. And uh, he could have got rid of that last guy, the last Penn Hill safety man coming from the side. He had paid her. I think if this game uh, would be decided at this point, he, we wouldn't see any of Ronnie Graham, but... Neil Gordon taking no chances, and who can blame him? Again, Graham in the backfield, and again it's Graham up the middle. Graham, the big boy that he is, just simply powering over the Plum Mustangs using his size. Picks up about five. Phil, he can catch, he can run, he can block, he can tackle. It's limitless to the talents of Ronnie Graham and what he can do. You know, they talk about LeVar Arrington as being the super junior. Penn Hills Indians fans, they have Ronnie Graham right here, and I think you have a, a, a viable argument between who's better, Graham or Arrington. Graham, because of his defensive abilities, may be more complete as a ball player. Victor Strader picks up a couple. It'll bring up third and four for the Indians. They're already down to the 13-yard line of the Plum Mustangs. We'll see if the Indians put the ball in the air, but they have Ronnie Graham in a split backfield. First man through is Schrader, and he slips and goes down. Decision time now for the Penn Hills Indians. Do they go for it on fourth down, or do they bring in Dave Zakia? And they will bring in Zakia. We know he has the leg. Ball placed at the 13 yard line. This will be a 30 yard field goal attempt for Zakia. And because of the spot of the ball, Zakia is just to the right of the muddy portion on the field. So that obviously will help. Zakia, one of two on the season field goal attempts. This will be his longest. Ball's put down. The kick is up. And the kick just looks like it's partially blocked and falls short. Victor Strader does a nice job to get the ball set. But the kick falls short, and Plum will take over at their own 20. What an opportunity gone by for the Indians. But they were able to move the football. You have to look at that as an advantage of the way their defense is playing. Come up with a big stop. Plum dodges a bullet, and they're hanging tough in this game. 9.02 to go. We're tied at 21. Each drive, oh, so important for each team. I formation, Odo. They give it to the second man through, Hartung. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. They'll give him a yard. Looked like he was grabbed by DeMond Gibson. Also, P.J. DiNatale. So give him almost two on the play. A 
Again, watch Scotty Umberger throwing the football. Odo and Hartung again in the backfield. Ryan Fulmer split to the near side. Steve Whiteman comes in motion. Umberger fumbles the snap, catches it in midair. Does a nice job to pick up three. Now third and five for the Indians. And the ball, I'm sure, is getting slick. You did, you saw it popped up and a possible movement in the offensive line for the Plum Mustangs. Humberger with a nice job. That's the third time today he's fumbled an exchange from center. This time it went straight up in the air. He picked it up and he was able to get about three yards. So it's third down again. The big down, it seems, tonight for the uh, Plum Mustangs. Lone setback is Nick Odo. And Umberger will throw the football, no doubt about that one. Setting up the low screen, the boss falls incomplete. Ryan Fulmer led a little too far on the play. He's crying foul, none to be called. And now Plum's going to have to punt. Seven and a half to go, fourth quarter. The Penn Hills defense comes up big. And again, Penn Hills now holding Plum at about their own 25. They should get good field position near midfield. And uh, they drove the football the last. They had 12 plays on that missed field goal by Zakia. And uh, they had the ball for over five and a half minutes. So offensively, they've gotten into a little bit of a groove. And uh, another nice drive like that would do them well. But of course, they need to come up with points. Penn Hills sets up the return. The ball comes to the near side. Dwayne Thompson watches it roll out of bound near midfield. Pennells will take over at their own 46-yard line. 7.23 to go in regulation. Penn Hills has dominated play, but the Plum Mustangs have come up with the big plays, the big touchdowns. Now let's see the Indians work for their dinner. First man through is Victor Strader, holds on to the football, crosses midfield to the Plum 49, called a pickup of about five yards. Call it second and a long four. <laughs> Dangerous exchange handoff between Gilmer and Strader on the quick pop up the middle. You gotta be a little bit careful if you're gonna run that play. It did work for a nice gain of five. If you look at the field conditions, Bob, you see on the near side of the field, it's mostly green to the far side. Center, there's a lot of mud. Expect the Indians to do a lot of running on this near side? I think that'd be a good idea. And just like that, they stay in the mud. That's Ronnie Graham picking up, call it two. They get third and about three. Goes from the 49 to the 47. Third and three now for the Indians. Livingston and Graham. And it's straighter around the left side. He dives forward short of the first down. Slips in the mud. As we suspect them running into the good grass, they run into the mud, and it'll be fourth in the yard. Fourth in the yard, and it's decision time for the Penn Hills coaching staff. I see no motion to the punt team. They're going to go for it fourth and one as Neil Gordon uh, gives the play to his quarterback, Lenny Gilmer. Big, huge play. 5.45 on the turning clock. Quite frankly, I'm surprised. I'm thinking in a tie football game, you try to play a perhaps play a game of position. But the Indians are going to go for it on fourth down. Livingston and Graham, and it's Graham. Fumbles the handoff, the ball is loose, and the Plum Mustangs get it. The Mustangs take over on their own 40-yard line. Graham had the first down, but the ball pops loose. And Plum takes over. And quite frankly, I'm surprised they've been staying in the mud. Uh, another big defensive stand right here, and the time continues to tick off. Plum at their own 40. Got a guard against the big play. 5.20 on the running clock, fourth quarter, tied at 21. Um, 
Schlumberger on the keeper. It doesn't fool anyone. Stop for, we'll call it no gain. Now second down, perhaps trying to lure the Penn Hills defense up a bit to go deep. Definitely indeed. Sometimes you want to sacrifice the play to set off a play. And that's what they might have done with Scotty Umberger. He has found absolutely no running room. He's been sacked three times on the evening. But he's thrown the football very well. Well, in the second half, uh, those big plays have come to a halt. He has struggled a lot to make some completions. Of course, they haven't thrown deep at all second half yet either. High formation for Plum. It's like Puchka, who had the long run earlier. Puchka picks up a couple. We'll call it two and a half. Call it three yards. Bring up third and seven. Now I suspect Plum may go deep. Well, they at least want to try to get the first down yardage in another big play. Last time they had a delay pattern with a little slant across the middle, and it forced them to find the Penn Hills had the, the good field position. Unable to do anything. Graham fumbling off fourth down. We'll see if they call that play again, the little slant across the middle. Big third down for Plum. Umberger looking back to throw, quick out. He has Tomasevich. Tomasevich will be short of the first down. Depends where they spot it. Needs to get out to midfield. Little measure for the first down. Needs to get to midfield. The ball plays just at midfield. My guess is he got just enough for the first down. I'm going to disagree and say he got did just short. Oh, just enough. You, that's the nose of the football. Not even the nose. A lace. A piece of mud on that ball. Get the piece of mud off that ball. Well, when it's on the ball, it's part of the ball. So now the Mustangs, first and ten at midfield. Three and a half to go in regulation. Golly G. Willickers. Woo. Indian Faith will begin the war chant. Puchka in motion. Humberger looking to set up the screen. Odo was there, but so is Ronnie Graham. The ball falls incomplete, stopping the clock at 317. But Plum still with the second down. Well, Dean Natale came from his uh, linebacking game position, got around Manchinella, the left tackle, and he pushed him, and he pushed him right towards the quarterback, Umberger, and that's what broke off that play. It was late developing, and they tried to throw it to Odo on the screen, and uh, because Dean Natale was pushed into the vicinity of the quarterback, it went for an incompletion. Penn Hills with two big turnovers on the night. It'll be a perfect time to see.
But an exciting, exciting quad east opener for both teams. Gilmer's looking to pass. He has a man wide open. And he does it. Crest goes completed. It's Dina Talley. The 25 down to the 31 yard line. Excuse me, it's Jeremy George. Oh, Jeremy, Jeremy. Clock continues to roll. Stoffers move the chains. Will run when they set it. Stayed in bounds. Oh, Jeremy, one of the co captains of tonight, was wide open in midfield. Gilmer now with three completions in the second half. Gilmer again looking to throw the football to Ronnie Graham. Graham bubbles, and it goes back to Plum. Hardy, Hardy, you break my Hardy. Holy cow. 101 to go. This is only week one. We gotta go through six more weeks of this. We're gonna be in intensive care. I mean, intensive care at the end of this one. Umberger stops back, looks close to the far side. The ball thrown short. Holy mackerel. Jeremy George just a few steps away from the interception at six points. Clock stops, 51 seconds to go in regulation. Humberger four or five in the first half with a big first half. Four of 14 here in the second half. A tale of two halves, but still time on the clock. And we saw Plum with a big strike, two big plays in the first half. Got to guard against that. 51 seconds to go in regulation. And this time Humberger hands off to Odo up the middle. Gets a few. I think now Plum is thinking overtime. I think both teams will be looking up for that and uh, time out Plum. So maybe they're going to take maybe one shot at uh, a final big play here. So the scene is set. 39 seconds to go, fourth quarter. Penn Hills and Plum tied at 21. Plum, third and seven from their own 23. Ugh. Now in regulation, it's not sudden death per se, where first team that scores wins. You get four yards, four downs from the 10. Whoever comes out on top after the four downs wins. If you score a touchdown, your opponent has to score a touchdown to stay in it. If you score, if you kick a field goal and the opponent scores a touchdown, they win. You both kick field goals, you go on again. And they tell two friends, and so on, and so on. As the steam rises above Mustang Field, Mustang Stadium, excuse me. play clock begins, but not the game clock. Nick Odo, the lone setback. We'll see what Umberger does. He's got an arm. He's looking back. He's looking for Tomasevich. Looks back to the right, throwing deep. And the ball is caught at the 43-yard line by Ryan Fulmer. Clock will begin to roll once the sticks are set. And Plum can spike the football to stop the clock. 32 seconds to go, regulation. Clock rolling 25. Umberger looking near side, and he spikes the football. Twenty seconds to go, fourth quarter. Are they thinking touchdown, field goal? No, I'm just thinking points. Obviously they are. If they get a completion, anything can happen. They are still definitely way out of field goal range, but they've shown the big play offense. That pass by the last one, the former covered 34 yards. Obviously the biggest play of the game for Plum to date. We're still tied at 21 and 20 long ticks left on that clock. 20 seconds can be a very long time.
Romberger looking for Gilbert again. And the ball thrown behind Ryan Fulmer at the 10. 15 seconds left. Third down and 10 now for Plum. This, this play falls incomplete. The time will be under 10 seconds. I think Plum on fourth down and maybe 10 would go for some razzle dazzle, maybe a hook and lateral or something like that. But uh, this is another crucial play. Third and 10. Plum at the Penn Hills 43 yard line. I think the word of the night is adrenaline. 15 seconds to go in regulation. We're tied at 21. Tomasevich with the football and gets out of bounds at the 32-yard line with 10 seconds to go. Looks like they'll be short of a first down. It would be a 59-yard field goal from this point. You got to think Plum's going to put throw the ball up for grabs in the end zone. Fourth down for Plum, 10 seconds to go at the Penn Hills 32. The ball is batted at the line of scrimmage. B.J. Dinatelli with a huge play. That and would have been a first down to stop the clock. Tomasovich could have gone out of bounds, and anything would happen with little time left, but Dinatelli makes sure it doesn't happen. So I suspect at this point the Indians will fall on the football and go to overtime. Definitely. Of course, we've been known to be wrong before. I'll be back. I'm going to find my heart. Look for my intestines while you're there. And look at this. The Indians go with five receivers. And Gilmer sacked with two seconds to go. They had nobody back to block, and he was blindsided. Fortunately for the Indians, he did not fumble. And there's the end of regulation, and we go to overtime. Dave Zakia warming up his leg on the near side. We take a short respite, and we come back at the 10-yard line. At the end of regulation, we're tied at 21. Story of tonight's game, Penn Hills, three turnovers. And of course, one of them in the end zone for a plum touchdown. And Scott Clairvan, what a way to spend his 17th birthday. Happy birthday wishes from his biggest fans for Scott Caravan. And I'm sure he turns 17. If this keeps up, he'll be 24 before the night's over. Texas shootout rules, if you're not familiar, the team who wins the toss obviously gets the chance to decide if they want the football, which they probably would. You go to the 10-yard line, you got four downs to score any type of points. Now, a defense cannot pick up a far more earned interception and score, but that would stop the possession. And as you said, the team that scores first, the other team has a chance to score. Field goal will be the touchdown to tie it up. If they continue to tie it up, it continues to go on. Of course, if you also score a touchdown, you kick the point after, and the opponent scores a touchdown, it's decision time. Do they go for the extra point to continue the overtimes, or do they go for two to decide the contest right there? Coin toss at center ice. Gibson, Graham, George, and Strader. The official drops it in the mud. Fumble. Looks like the Indians have won the toss. Personally, I think I want to go on defense first. Personally, I want to take the offense. I like to score that point and put the pressure on the other team. If you're on your defense, you got a pressure stopping. Now also, we're which end? The end of the field, so we're going to see who's going to get the chance to score first. The Indians' offense appears to have the better end of the field down to our left. They will defend the right goal. Penn Hills won the toss and said they'll take defense. And DeMond Gibson says, let's make some noise. Oh, 
Well, the advantage here is if Plums kicks a field goal, the Indians know they have to get at least a field goal or a touchdown would win it. You know what to, uh, what you got to do. If they don't score, you know that you can go four downs and not score, or if you get a point. An early first and goal situation of the evening, Plum had a first down at about the Penn Hills four, came away with nothing. Penn Hills defense held. Of course, there was a penalty in that. But uh, that was the only goal situation where we had in this game. Of course, also remember we have two excellent field goal kickers on both teams. Otto and Hartung in the eye formation for Plum. We're in overtime. Whiteman in motion. Humberger's going to throw the football looking end zone. Touchdown, Plum. The pass completed to number 81, Mike Harris, on the jump ball. The Indians, after we see what they do on the point after, we'll have four downs to score a touchdown. Mike Harris is 6'2", and it's a case where, like, the Steeler cornerbacks are short. It was a jump ball situation. Harris just outleaped the cornerback for Penn Hills, and Plum is now up six. Now the all-important point after. Greg Watson for the kick. Kick is up. And it's good. So the Indians will now have four plays down to our left to put the ball into the end zone and then decide whether they want to go for one or two. As both offenses go down to the right. Thought they switched ends. Anyone left this game early? Woo. Thompson and Livingston. Second man throws. Thompson, Thompson, five yard line. Touchback. Touchdown, Penn Hills. Just like that. The Indians getting a touchdown. And the Indians will go for the point after to tie the game. Zakia. There comes the key, and they do go for the one. <laughs> of course, from the three, run Ronnie Graham up the gut. But, uh, go for the one. If they, Zakia makes it, we go to another overtime. If not, the game goes to Plum. Right now, overtime, 28-27 Plum. Straighter on the hold, Zakia on the kick. And all the pressure in the world is on Dave Zakia. Place down, the kick is up, and it's good. Eight more plays to come, 28-28. Holy cow. We're in overtime, tied at 28. About to go to double overtime, and Bob, the ruling on this is? It says if a tie persists after both teams had their opportunities, we will repeat the process, so we do indeed have another toss. So we have another toss, we can change sides again, we can do just about anything. Except punt. And this time the Indians will take over. The Indians will get first crack at it this time. So Plum, I guess the, obviously the sentiment is to take defense first because Plum wins the toss and they choose defense first. So of course, the easiest thing for you to do is score on the first play. That makes things a lot easier. You nod in agreement. Sort of obvious. And 
Indians call a timeout. And I think my wife chose not to attend tonight's game. Well, I'm saying you would have been a father with this excitement a little earlier than expected. I think I've almost had the pain. <laughs> we were tied at 21 at the regulation after the first series of overtime, which we had four plays each. It only took one apiece, and we're tied at 28. And again, that's right, tied at 21, and the points will rack up as we go. Of course, the Indians' points per game average has increased. That, that 2.3 went up a little bit. Of course, their points per game scored is also increasing. You can take all that for uh, throw that out the window because right now when you're in overtime and this great of a game, it, it's the wins that cost. And it, it, you almost hate to have a loser in a game like this. Absolutely. But last year we would have ended in a tie. This year, that's why they put overtime we, we in. It was voted in. And you're always going to have two sides of that argument. It, the overtime is brought in to try to eliminate Gardner points. Now the Indians here in the second overtime. What's the pitch? Dwayne Thompson down close to the goal line. They're going to mark it at the four. And the little man is running like a big guy tonight. Of course, I look back to the clock. I don't need to look at the clock. So now second and goal from the four for the Indians. Ronnie Graham, Victor Strader, and Dwayne Thompson in the power eye. Pitch to Thompson, near side. Thompson, touchdown, Penn Hills! And there goes Dave Zakia very quickly. Obviously, no hesitation on the part of the panels coaches to go for two. I think it's a safe bet to go for one because Plum still has to score twice, and then if they score a touchdown, it's their decision. You come, you, obviously, someone's going to come up with a big stop somewhere. But what a job by Dwayne Thompson. What a job by the deep, the offensive line by Penn Hills in this overtime, just blowing Plum's defensive line off the football. And Thompson just waltzed in with a five-yard touchdown around that time. You know, Mr. Birmingham has been with the team, the equipment manager, for 40 years, and this probably has to be the most exciting game he's seen. Snap, hold, kick up, it's good. 35-28 Penn Hills here in overtime. The Mustangs now come onto the field with their chance. Now it all comes back to the Penn Hills defense. And you can hear the echoes throughout the valley. Defense, defense, defense. Four plays for Plum, a turnover ends it. Whether Penn Hills gets a fumble or an interception, it is over. On the first play, the first overtime, the Mustangs went to the fade to the corner of the end zone on the a jump, jump ball. The jump ball situation to Mike Harris, and he out jumped the Penn Hills quarterback, and we'll see if they do it again. Puchka and Odo split in the backfield. Have Whiteman to the near side, Fulmer to the far side. And, of course, Umberger's going to throw. He's looking. The ball's put up and out of bounds. Second down for Plum. I can't take this anymore. Same type of play. They just ran a little straight fade pattern. It's one on one. No other options for Umberger. He either completes that pass or he has no other option on those type of play. Penn Hill strength, their defense, comes down to them now. Brad Gething split to the near side. Fulmer to the far side. Draw play. And Puch gets brought down by the face mask. That'll be a half the distance to the goal penalty. I don't think it's an automatic first down. How much you can't get a first down in a, in a goal situation like this. I think you have to repeat second down. And that's what they'll do. They'll repeat second down. It'll be half the distance to the goal. And thank God they stretched their necks out because that was scary looking. Did you catch his paw when that was? <laughs> no. Nah. Actually, uh, I didn't. I had the binoculars on. It was really tough. And uh, Butcher gets a yard on the carry, and they take it half the distance to the goal. So second and goal from the five. 
Second and goal from what appears to be just outside the five. We'll call it the five. Now Coach Timko back onto the field. As strategy is discussed. Second down. You can't get a first down. Not this is new to everybody. It, Players, coaches, announcers, fans. You know, I think so if you have an interference penalty in the end zone, there, there's no first down. It can keep you could possibly keep having a twilight zone second down and goal situation going on here. Ad infinitum. Very good. Thank you. Talk about ad excitement to this game with overtime. Not that it wasn't exciting enough. But we have what? 63 points? And we're still going and going and hopefully stopping with a Penn Hills defensive stand after the timeout. Second down and goal from the five. Here come the Mustangs, and they're in a power eye formation. Umberger fakes. He's going to roll. He's looking in zone for Harris. And the ball's picked off by the Indians. The ball's incomplete. That was the ball game if it was picked off. Damien Germany. Damien Germany with the big defensive play, but the ball falls incomplete. The pass intended for Mike Harris, who caught the first touchdown in the overtime, in the first overtime. We're here in the second overtime. I think what would have may have happened is Harris actually turned defender and knocked it away or stripped it away from Germany as they were tumbling towards the ground. So we'll call it a great play by Mike Harris to keep Plum alive. Now third and goal from the five. The Mustangs need a touchdown. And again, they go to the eye formation, power eye formation. And again, Umberger's going to throw. And again, he looks for Harris. And Umberger has some running room to the near side. Looks end zone. And it's picked up. The Indians win. The Indians win. The Indians win. Oh, my. The Indians win. 35-28. Two overtimes. Who intercepted it? Victor Strader. Victor Strader. Are we excited? <laughs> Deservedly so. And the Indians are a happy bunch. And who can blame them? As we catch our breath again, the final score, Penn Hills. In double overtime, beat the Plum Mustangs, 35-28. You're watching Penn Hills Indians Football 95. As we wrap things up here at uh, Mustang Stadium in Plum, Bob, I'm at a loss for words. Double overtime, also a loss of voice. Double overtime, Penn Hills 35, Plum 28. They brought in overtime this year to make things a little more exciting. Didn't think it was going to be used that often, but boy, has it been used. And boy, was it exciting, was it ever. Big plays tonight all the way around on both sides of the football. Penn Hill's giving up a lot of big pass plays and a great job by Plum and their quarterback, Scott Umberger. He threw for over 267, uh, 267 yards. He threw... Uh, three touchdowns, and they scored one on the fumble. But uh, the little man was the big man tonight, Dwayne Thompson, 171 yards rushing, and count them, one, two, three, four, five touchdowns, including what turned out to be the game winner. Coming into tonight's game, we knew Plum was a passing team. they get up, get most of the yards through the air. The Indians, ground, ground Gordon, as they call him, and it was uh, evident tonight, the, the Mustangs going through the air, the Indians going on the ground, but what decided tonight's game, turnovers. And turnovers kept Plum in it. They got a touchdown off a of Lenny Gilmer fumble, recovered in the end zone. And uh, Penn Hills was driving towards the end of regulation. And Ronnie Graham caught a pass for a first down. He fumbled the football. It kept Plum right in the game. But the big turnover, the interception, the only one of the night by Scott Umberger, picked off by Victor Strader to stop Plum in the second overtime. Talk about Dwayne Thompson, five touchdowns tonight. But who's the name you're going to remember? It's Victor Strader with the uh, interception in the end zone. The Indians go 1-0 and in the quad east. The Mustangs fall to 0-1, and, and we said every game in the Quad East was going to be a battle. 
and a heartbreaker for Plum, but they have, they have to help hold their heads high. They did a great job. Penn Hills did a great job. Uh, really exciting in the overtime, and Penn Hills ends up with 240 yards rushing. Uh, but it's surprisingly five completions and three for three in the second half for Len Gilmer, and they get 94 yards passing. So maybe Penn Hills uh, opening the pages in their playbook a little bit. But you've mentioned 4-0 now for the Indians, 1-0 in the Quad East. It's, amazing. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that in the second half they do go to the passing game. Penn Hills Indians led 7-0 early in this game to uh, second quarter touchdowns by Plum. The Indians trailed 14-0 at the half. First two possessions, they scored two touchdowns, take the lead, but allow Plum to get right back into it. Good teams, they come from behind to take the lead, but after they gave up the lead, they didn't quit from there. They just kept right on going. They overcame adversity many times tonight, uh, trailing really for the first extended time and uh, fumbling the football in their own end zone, and they come back and give up the first touchdown in overtime. They come right back and score on a 10-yard scamper by Dwayne Thompson, and they overcame a lot tonight, and that, that's going to be a big character builder for this team. Next week, the Indians take on the defending state champion, McKeesport Tigers. And I'm sure they remember last year, they were the closest team to knocking off McKeesport in their dream season. And who knows, maybe Penn Hills is going to look to that as a stepping stone. McKeesport already victorious on this evening. They defeated Woodland Hills earlier. Even though it will be week two next week, it will be for first place in the Quad East. Uh, perhaps it continue to be a tie, but in the Quad East schedule, you got to win if you want to keep staying in first place. And next uh, next week, the Indians have to continue with just continuing to try to win each and every week. Another tough test, and they, they put in mm -hmm. overtime to eliminate uh, the ties, and uh, it showed in the excitement tonight. And uh, if they're all like this, we got six more to go in the Quad East schedule. Lord help us. Uh, I don't know what's more exciting, these overtime games or what. Next week, the Indians and the McKeesport Tigers, the defending state champions at Utah Stadium Friday night. Come on out and see this exciting Penn Hills team. Never a dull moment with these Indians, I have to say. But again, tonight for Plum Mustang, it was from Mustang Stadium in double overtime. Penn Hills Indians 35, the Plum Mustangs 28. My broadcast partner, Bob Orquist, our producer tonight, Kevin Burke. I'm Bill Navarre. We'll see you again next Friday night on Penn Hills Indians Football 95.